Hello everyone, this is Dr. Praveen Tripathi and with me is Dr. Debayan Banerjee, rank 4 INICT. Debayan, many, many congratulations. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it's been an uh, absolute honor to be here, to be able to talking to you and I uh, very much look forward to our conversation. The pleasure is all mine, dear. So, Debayan, uh, you got rank 4 and that too in the very first attempt. So, that's some achievement. But you know what makes this achievement even bigger is that you are from uh, KEM. And the internship in KM is pretty hectic. It's not an easy internship. And uh, your internship got over in March and just after a month, you were able to crack the exam. So uh, I have a question. We'll go to the strategy later that, you know, internship is a period where half the students think that, okay, let us enjoy, let us, you know, give ourselves some time. And our best shot would be after spending one year studying exclusively. Some students want to, you know, uh, prepare along with the internship. So what do you think? Uh, when we prepare as an intern, are there some pros and there's, are there some cons as well? Uh, well, uh, sir, like uh, I will tell you my thought process. I felt that uh, I feel that the best attempt for an entrance exam is always after internship because mm. it is a period where we go to the wards, uh, we are in touch with the subjects, we are just fresh out of final year. Mm. Uh, so, like uh, the understanding and the grip on subjects is much better. I feel that once uh, there is a gap uh, in our studies or like uh, we are not able to prepare during that particular time, it definitely brings about a gap because uh, mm. we move mm. away from the uh, setup in which we were in. Right. So I feel that uh, if someone is aiming at least a sincere attempt towards mm. uh, any particular entrance exam, they should always uh, consider preparing during their internship because I feel that gives, uh, you know, a good uh, uh, support in some sort because we see patients, we go to our duties because, mm. um, uh, you know, wantingly or non-wantingly, we have to right. uh, do all the duties. Right. So that way, it definitely gives that clinical touch uh, to mm. our patient. That's what I feel. But yeah, uh, of course, internship also has its own difficulties. Uh, preparation during that time because, uh, you know, we have to manage uh, our preparation along with our duties. Right. And, you know, there, there will, of course, be many days when uh, we are not able to prepare uh, to the maximum extent or to the extent we wish. Hmm. Yeah, again, I feel it is important that we identify uh, periods in an internship hmm. where postings are relatively light and, you know, hmm. compensate for that. Right. So, so uh, use the lighter postings and in the difficult postings when you have less time, just, just manage to hang on somehow. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Devayan, uh, one interesting thing was that uh, you had appeared for all the mocks of Cerebellum and I was just looking at your rank. So in Cerebellum, Sinai City Mock 1, you got rank 62, right? And and even in the Mock 2, it was like 15 or 20 something. I think it was 30. 30, yeah. So in a, in a, in a mock test given by like 10,000 students, you were getting 60 or 40. But the real exam, which was given by lakh students, you jumped over to rank 4. Now, Th that's a very important message for everyone that, you know, students sometimes get very disheartened by their GTs that if I'm getting this code, this is going to happen in the real exam, but, but the game is always wide open. Uh, you, you appeared for the mocks. Uh, how was your experience and, you know, the new things that were added, video explanations and cube based explanations. So what was your experience like? Uh, well, uh, coming, uh, I just came to know that uh, I think uh, it was in the month of uh, April uh, where mm -hmm. the first uh, cerebellum uh, INIG, INICT mock was conducted. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, I was uh, in a phase where I had done uh, most of my subjects mm -hmm. and advised them to some extent. So, I felt that I should give uh, this exam, you know, it will mm -hmm. help me gauge my preparation and exactly where I stand. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I really liked about uh, the fact of the INICT mocks was that there were two mocks which were conducted of varying difficulty level. Mm -hmm. The first mock uh, was an uh, advanced difficulty level mock. So, mm. yeah, so I uh, gave that uh, mock test and yes, my score uh, was not something I had hoped for because mm. I am someone uh, in my mocks, I usually had a rank under 50 most of the time. So, you mm. know, that was the time it was a little bit of an eye opener or rather a little disheartening, I would say. Mm. Mm. That, uh, my rank was not uh, to the uh, uh, extent I had hoped for. But yes, again, uh, that again served as a very good uh, source of motivation for mm. me to go back Mm. review those things and maybe touch upon those areas which I was not touching before. Right. So in that way, the first uh, uh, advanced level mock was uh, definitely a big eye opener, I would say, uh, in my preparation. Mm. Uh, as you mentioned rightly, the video explanations, uh, something uh, is very unique uh, uh, that Cerebellum has offered because uh, there are some things uh, where we may not be able to absorb it as quickly by reading a particular uh, set of text. Uh, mm. I think that absorption is much better when a person comes live on the video and explains uh, that particular question. So That, that whole idea of Q-based explanations, we, we were trying to make a balance. We did not want to give long explanations because the time is limited. So we thought that let's go for 60 seconds. So, so do you think that it was able to serve its purpose? 
Uh, yeah, I feel absolutely because I feel that once we read through a lot of stuff after a point of time, we definitely get fatigued. So mm. that way I just used to, you know, uh, for some questions uh, rather than reading the explanation, I just, it was, I think, a one and a half, one and a half minute video. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in fact, it was a good boost to me. All right. Uh, going back to your prof years, Debayan. Uh, so when you were in your first prof or second prof, uh, did you focus more on concept building? Did you read all the standard books like Robbins and all? Or were you focusing more on notes and videos? Uh, well, uh, sir, uh, like uh, during my first and second year, it was the period uh, when the COVID lockdown was, uh -huh. uh, like uh, college was disrupted uh, mm -hmm. quite some time. So I was, it was a time when I was majorly at home. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, uh, uh, during that time, I made it a point uh, that because in my first six months or so in my first year, I was not in a very good space. I was just adjusting to the MBBS mm -hmm. uh, setup. Mm -hmm. So when I was back home, I just, you know, started flipping through the pages of the standard textbooks. Mm -hmm. And I would say for the first and second year subjects, yeah, uh, if not cover to cover, uh, I have pretty much uh, given a good reading of at least all the basic standard textbooks, which are commonly used uh, for the first and second year subjects. But uh, coming to my third and final year, my preparation was majorly uh, both for the university exams as well as for the entrance exam. It was majorly from the notes and other videos. Okay. But but uh, even in the second year, as you were mentioning a bit uh, before, that along with those things, you were st you had started watching some videos. Like you were telling me that you watched some GRGS videos uh, that time also. So uh, I basically uh, made it a point that uh, rather than directly going to the textbook, I uh, for a particular topic, I used to start by watching a video so that okay. uh, the understanding of the terminology becomes easier. So that after mm. that, once we go to the textbook, so mm. the understanding and rather the speed of learning. Mm. Uh, what about the short subjects, Debayan? I mean, the short subject is something... Uh, I mean, I am a bit biased because I'm a psychiatry teacher, but I've always felt that, you know, short subjects are limited and they're very high scoring, yeah. but then some students think that, okay, we can do it from very small source and you know, that's okay. Uh, what is your opinion about the short subjects and how, how did you go about it? Uh, well, yes. Uh, like uh, before my exam, I did talk to some of uh, uh, my seniors in the college. They all told the same thing that uh, the long subjects are something uh, where the boundaries are not very definite mm -hmm. because uh, right. there's a tendency to ask uh, questions beyond, uh, you know, certain uh, limits. Uh, but I feel that is not the case with short subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. Even the short subject, it has a very uh, limited number of things or areas which are tested. Right. I feel each short subject is uh, something in which you can always sit with and complete it in maybe a couple of days at the most. So, you know, right. if you're watching the videos, there are not a lot of videos to be done if you're doing mm -hmm. it with the rapid revision. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. From the main videos, I feel if mm -hmm. someone is in their profs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think it takes about uh, three to four days uh, for a particular short subject, maybe mm -hmm. a week for certain uh, subjects as well. Mm -hmm. But I feel that, uh, yeah, uh, one thing I feel that uh, people find is that the weightage of the short subjects is less. Mm. But uh, I feel that this INICT again is a stark reminder to the fact that that is not so because uh, short subjects definitely had a lot of representation in the paper. Mm. So I feel that, yes, uh, if someone is able to dedicate a month or month and a half of their time, I feel that is more than enough to at least cover the important areas of all the short subjects. And I feel uh, that person uh, is definitely much better placed uh, to score well in the upcoming years. Another thing they buy in about this INICT was that... Uh... Uh, the scores that even toppers got were not very high. Yes, so the sir. paper was deeper than it appeared. Paper was more conceptual than it appeared. A lot of students who thought that I'll get 175 correct ended up getting 150 correct. Yes. So, so probably what was happening for a couple of years, the examiners are not taking a decision that let us ask more deeper question. People who know the stuff can only answer it. Uh, yeah, because as you have rightly mentioned, uh, this year's INICT definitely had a little more depth uh, to mm. questions and uh, I feel that the questions are basically shifting to the thing that it is more statement based, uh, yeah. set of four to five statements are given and you mm. have two correct set of options right. rather than, you know, the single one liners, right. single symptoms or single. So, uh, so they are testing four or five topics in the single question rather than ask testing one topic. And I feel uh, that kind of an exam always requires you to know the topic in much more mm -hmm. detail. And, yeah. and that is where concept building uh, definitely comes into play. And I feel in that way, the Cerebellum GT was a blessing because it <laughs> gave me the experience of a low score so that, uh, you know, I was uh, mm -hmm. much better place because uh, giving the exam too, I felt that, yes, I would not be able to score as high as my regular GT. So, yeah, again, that uh, factor was always there. Uh, Devayan, uh, another uh, big discussion, burning discussion has always been the role of PYQs. So uh, as you, you also took some of the late night PYQs uh, test. So, so what is your thinking now that you have gone beyond this process, you have, you have is dead. 
uh, what kind of a role the PYQs played in the final exam scores? Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, PYQs are definitely because if you see an exam like INICT, it has definitely a tendency of testing certain specific areas in each subject. You go mm. over taking any of the 19 subjects, I think the INICT has a very predictable uh, way of at least testing the areas, if mm. not the question per se direct. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so in I, I feel in that way, uh, learning the previous year topics, I would say, mm -hmm. are not the questions mm -hmm. it's specific because uh, many people have a tendency of, you know, just learning the question as it is. I feel mm -hmm. that that is not very prudent. Uh, rather, mm -hmm. I feel that one should have an approach of approaching the question as a topic uh, and, uh, you know, making sure that mm -hmm. if that particular question is asked in a fashion uh, which mm -hmm. is different from what has been asked before, they are able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, having said that, I feel that there were always uh, questions which were direct repeats as well, because uh, there mm -hmm. were many questions which were asked in the November session, which were repeated mm -hmm. as it is in the mm -hmm. session as well. So I feel PYQs uh, definitely uh, one should uh, do if they are you know, targeting the INICT exam. Uh, in the internship end, you also used a bit of BTR to bring everything together and revise. So, so how was that experience like? Uh, well, yeah, B BTR was definitely a game changer for me because uh, BTR is something which as a tool for last minute revision is mm. definitely a blessing. Mm. Uh, I, I started using it a little later in my mm. internship uh, when I was, you know, about uh, four to five months from the exam mm. that is when mm. uh, I started using BTR. BTR and BTR, you know, definitely serves as a great binder uh, of sorts for all the subjects because you see a particular BTR video, you you know, uh, once uh, we see the video, we see ma'am explaining all the mm -hmm. stuff and all the concept, we, it sort of serves as a checklist rather than a class, I feel. It uh, just, you know, uh, gives us the impression that yes, we have covered this topic and in mm -hmm. case uh, we have not, it also gives us a set of those volatile facts uh, which mm -hmm. we can always, uh, you know, keep on revising. And I Kind of gels the information knowledge together. Right, right. And I would also say that I actually used BTR till maybe the last night of my exam. Mm. So that was uh, to the extent to, because uh, I just relied entirely on BTR maybe for the last four to five days uh, in the run-up to my exam. The last four to five days. Okay, wonderful. Uh, wonderful, Divan. So my last question to all the toppers is always this. Uh, there are many students who are just starting. Yes. And there are many students uh, who could not do it this time. And they are very disheartened and disappointed. What is your advice to both category of students? Somebody who is just who has just started with the internship maybe a month back, what will you tell that person? And somebody who would probably now drop an year if he's not able to crack need PG and then restart, I mean, start all over again. What are your advices to both these sets of students? Uh, well, a common advice to both of them would be to just take a couple of days and uh, assess where you stand currently. For someone mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. uh, just starting internship, I feel they're fresh out of the final year exam. So, mm -hmm. I feel they should just, uh, you know, sit down and see uh, how much they're prepared for those final year subjects, for the third year subjects, for the first mm -hmm. year subjects and the mm -hmm. second year subjects. You know, mm -hmm. it's necessary to first make an assessment of overall mm -hmm. where you stand and gauge uh, I feel everyone has a basic level of preparation in them. It is not that it is completely unprepared for a particular exam. It is just the level that varies. So, you know, for someone who is just starting, I would uh, say that uh, a good uh, way to start would be to start with the first and second year subjects. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that is something uh, which during our profs, many of us, even I uh, could not do it to the fullest extent. Right. So which there was always some lacunae in those six mm. subjects. Mm. I feel that uh, a good way to start would be to, you know, just starting mm. by watching the videos uh, because initially in the internship, we are having some time mm. in hand. So mm. we can start by watching the videos for those subjects. Mm. So, you know, once concepts become stronger, then we can, of course, come back to the third and final year subjects, uh, maybe in the four to five months after that. Right. Uh, so in that way, uh, I feel that uh, once you are about... Uh, seven, eight months into your internship, I feel that you should at least have a basic first reading of all the 19 subjects. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, yeah, for someone who is, uh, of course, uh, could not uh, uh, you know, score well this time, I feel that there may have been some areas where they could not have prepared or they mm. would have wished to prepare a little bit. Mm. Mm. So I feel that, you know, one should just sit back, take a couple of days and make mm. a note of the areas where, you know, they mm. would have wished their preparation was better. Right. And, work on those areas and you know there are some subjects which they have done pretty well and they have scored pretty well as well so i feel that that areas don't need a lot of working but yeah you definitely need to be in touch and you know make sure you don't forget wonderful it was a pleasure talking to you Devayan, and uh, the, the advices that you're giving are, are very you know sorted out and something that can be easily followed so wonderful so what branch are you planning to pick now uh, sir i'm a little bit uh, radio and medicine 
<laughs> taking a little bit of time to decide. Uh, so all the all the rankers that I talk to, everybody is confused between radio and medicine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of split now, but not with radio. Uh, like okay. little inclined towards the surgical branch, but again, I'll take a call on that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. No, so, see, this is something that I always say that medicine and surgery are evergreen branches. Uh, you know, at, at your age, when you are in the mid twenties, uh, you know factors like. Uh, uh, early settlement and initial income, all those things start coming to the mind. But if you uh, think about, uh, you know, what will happen 10 years later, medicine and surgery are always evergreen branches. Nobody ever regrets them. They are beautiful branches. Yeah. So, so if you have an inclination, please uh, think long term. And yeah. one advice I would give you before we end this interview, uh, rather than, you know, going and talking to the PGs and SRs, uh, who themselves have very little idea of how things work in the world. Go and talk to somebody who has been practicing for four or five years. They have a much better understanding of how things work. I'll definitely do that. Thank you for that. Devan, thank you for talking to us. And again, many congratulations for this wonderful accomplishment. It was an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you.